Hey yogis, uh, this video is going to be the Dhammapada verses 6 through 10. Uh, there was a previous video that was a quick introduction of what the Dhammapada is, what it's about, and then the first five verses. Uh, so if you are got this video for some reason, there is another video. Um, so this is the second video in this series. We are following along in uh, a specific book, which is called the Dhammapada the Buddhist Path of Wisdom. It's a PDF that you can download online and follow along if you so choose. It's free. Um, and then that way, if you want to kind of follow along with us, you can. Um, I'm going to read the verses very quickly and then um, I'll kind of summarize them and do a quick commentary. Again, I'm trying to keep these, you know, in the five minute range so it's a little bit, you know, it's easily digestible for you. Uh, so verse 6 is where we're starting in the Dhammapada and it says there are those who do not realize that one day we all must die but those who do realize this settle their quarrels verse 7 just as a storm throws down a weak tree so does Mara overpower the man who lives for the pursuit of pleasures who is uncontrolled in his senses immoderate in eating indolent and dissipated for this, uh, Mara, I mean, the, the best example I can give of Mara is Mara's temptation. Mara is, you know, the Buddhist version of, I guess, Satan. Um, Mara is the tempter. Um, verse 8, just as a storm cannot prevail against a rocky mountain, so Mara can never overpower the man who lives meditating on the impurities, who is controlled in the senses, moderate in eating, and filled with faith and earnest effort. Verse 9, whoever being depraved, devoid of self-control and truthfulness should don the yellow monk's robe. He surely is not worthy of the robe. Verse 10, but whoever is purged of depravity, well established in virtues and filled with self-control and truthfulness, he is indeed worthy of the yellow robe. Those last two are, are speaking to monks. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't really apply to us, but I did live in a monastery, so I, I do have some commentary on this. Um, we're going to start, obviously, with verse 6. Um, pretty clear. Those, there are those who do not realize that one day we all are going to die. Um, obviously, I think that's probably most of us uh, that are walking around in the world. You know, death kind of happens to others. Um, we distract ourselves with you know, indulgences and pleasures and all these things. And, you know, ultimately, um, the more we do that, the less we kind of acknowledge that this life is fleeting and that one day it will end. It's very clear. Uh, he says those who realize that they're going to die eventually settle their quarrels. Like they, they're not going to leave this world with unfinished business. They're going to live their life in such a way that um, things are taken care of. And, uh, I mean, it's self-evident why that is a reasonable way to be, right? Um, verse 7, it explains that when you're tempted, if you have uncontrolled senses, you are going to fall over just like a weak tree. Like, um, if you like to overindulge, um, whenever you're tempted, you're just going to fall over. And, I mean, I mean my, in my experience, like, when I tend towards vice, um, it seems like a little bit of vice and the next thing you know, I'm, you know, constantly thinking of vice and, uh, it was kind of what he's saying in verse eight. Um, he uses the word man, but clearly this is for men and women. I mean, he said that, you know, women are equal essentially to men in the, in the levels of enlightenment, like everybody can reach enlightenment. And so he uses the word, the pronoun man, but it, this is for everybody. The person who lives meditating on the impurities, who is controlled in his senses, moderate in eating and filled with faith and earnest effort. Um, he says you will prevail as though you are a rocky mountain, like you, nothing can move you. You know, you have to stay in meditation. You have to understand that, you know, what is impure and have keen discernment and, uh, uh, earnest effort, right? You have to try um, to to be to be there. 
Whoever being depraved, devoid of self-control and truth is, should not become a monk. That's all he's saying. Uh, verse 10, whoever is purged of depravity and well-established in virtue should become a monk. And uh, um, again, I'm kind of running out of my self-imposed limit here. We're at five minutes. But after living at a monastery, I, you know, there are monks that their motives um, maybe aren't necessarily um, the motives of, of someone who's on a spiritual path. Uh, you see that, you know, monasteries are a great place to hide. Um, and so he's just saying, you know, if you, you know, self-observation, you, you know, if you're, if you're depraved and you're struggling with these things, and if you are, it's better for you not to become a monk, right? It's better for you to just go and uh, pursue those indulgences basically, because you're probably going to end up harming yourself and others, um, in this pursuit. So uh, thank you again for your attention. Thank you for listening. I hope you find value in this. Please like, share, and comment. And uh, yes, uh, if you would like some free meditation or free yoga classes, um, please come hang out with me at uh, yogaforseniors.online. Take care.